All right, hello everyone. Today is Tuesday, February 27th. We've got some new Guild Wars 2 news. We are uh, coming up on the opening of the Realm of Dreams, and there is a girthy, thick pile of patch notes here. So, a lot of stuff coming out today, uh, and we are going to go over it right now for the people who have not been up to date on what is going on. Starting from the top, Realm of Dreams. Hator's barrier has finally fallen, and Paitha's army continues, uh, or sorry, prepares to march further into the heart of Naos. But what dangers await beyond the veil, and how much attrition can her forces survive? Paitha and the Wayfinder will need new allies to bolster their ranks if they hope to bring the war to Ipark's gates. But who will they be able to convince to step out of um, the shadow of the Midnight King? I mean, we've literally got an entire fleet at our beck and call, but yes, who, who will? Who would possibly come to join us? Uh, release highlights. News story chapters that take players deeper into the mysterious Inner Mayonnaise have been added. A new region of the new Inner Mayonnaise Explorable Zone, Niedra Surrounds, is now accessible. That is a name. The Wizard's Vault has been updated with a new rotation of exciting rewards, including three new armor pieces. Uh, armor pieces. The Wizard's Vault has also received a number of quality of life improvements to address player feedback. Let's really quickly pop into the game here. Look into the vault. That is not the vault. Uh, look into the vault here. Uh, through the Veil season has ended. Welcome to the new season. Check out the Legacy Shop for any missed rewards. Okay. Uh, astral stuff. Uh, there is a Solar Astrolab selection box, which has, looks like, a whole bunch of Solar Astrolab weapons. Pretty neat stuff. Uh, so this is the gist of what they look like. Pretty neat, actually. You know, I, I'm actually going to go through these. So we saw Warhorn a second ago. There's Torch. There is Sword. I do like that. I do like that. That is the Staff, uh, Shortbow, the Shield, Scepter. I feel like these would look really good on Chrono. Uh, rifle, Pistol, Mace, oh wow. Uh, longbow, Hammer, Greatsword, Focus. Oh, that's cool. Uh, dagger and axe. All right, so that's all that. And what do we got? Skies. <laughs> oh, mom, can we have a mukluk wizard hat? You've got a wizard hat at home. Yeah, it comes with a freaking helmet and water wings. Okay, that's uh. Y'all remember that that when uh, the, the Resident Evil game with the, the tall lady vampire came out, there was a clip that floated around the internet of someone made a mod for the game, and every time they saw her, uh, her hat got bigger until it was just like, you couldn't even see her anymore. It was just a giant hat. Like, this reminds me of that. Well, there's that, if you want it. Uh, Leaf Glider. Honestly, kind of cool for the Silvari in your family. Uh, Sky Sage's gloves. There you go. That's that. Uh, the Cat Tree Chair. There's a lot of people going crazy for this one on uh, on the forums and on Twitter and stuff. That is the cat tree. It's got lots of cats. Lots of cats. Uh, Sky Sage's boots. Hard to see under the trench coat, but they're there. Uh, and uh, Legendary Weapon Kit uh, Part 3. What does this one have? What does it have? Predator, Moot, Dreamer, and Frost Fang is the new kit. All right, so that is what I see that is new uh, off the cuff. All right. A new weapon proficiency has been added for each profession. Uh, Ellie Pistol, Mesmer Rifle, Necro Sword, NG Shortbow, Ranger Maces, Thief Main Hand Axe, Guardian uh, Two Pistols, Warrior Staff, and Revenant Main Hand Scepter. Um, the first tiers of the Legi Obsidian Armor Sets are available to craft for all armor weight classes. A second tier will be added as an optional upgrade in the next major update to Guild Wars 2 Secrets of the Obscure. The number one question I'm getting asked a lot about this is what is the difference between Tier 1 Obsidian Armor and Tier 2 Obsidian Armor? Um, do, scraping together all the info I have found, it's cosmetic. Tier 1 Armor will have some appearances that you may like. It will have all the quality of life, which is the important part. Uh, for example, I am wearing full legendary. I wear whatever I want uh, as far as transmute. I, you know, most of what you see on me does not have the legendary graphic. Uh, so like the wizard's hat, I, this, it's not its original appearance. I just tra you know, transmuted it to look like a wizard hat. The important part is can you just change the stats on the fly? That's what makes it uh, legendary. 
Um, so the tier two is going to be shinier and fancier. I think the World v. World has an armor set like that where the higher tier uh, looks fancier. Um, but also I think it's going to have more uh, die channels. But, you know, if you don't care about that, you know, well, that, well, that's later on. We don't even know what the mats are going to be to make that. It might be just like take your tier one set and slap 250 dies on it or something. We don't know. But uh, the tier one version of the Obsidian Armor is uh, is out now. Okay. The Ledgy Relic is now available to craft. More information about the Ledgy Relic can be found here. So, Ledgy Relic, if before today you made a Ledgy Rune, a Ledgy Rune, which I told people about, I posted about this, you got a Ledgy Relic in like a the box right here, boom, free Ledgy Relic. I, I kept this open for this video, but that's it. After this moment, you craft it. There's no more free Relic after this. So that should, uh, like, it, up until this moment for the last couple weeks, uh, it was a, there was a thing that was like, if you make a Ledgy Rune, you get a Ledgy Relic for free. So that because of that, the prices to make a Ledgy Rune skyrocketed. That should start settling back down a little bit once we see, uh, once we see uh, all the other stuff. Does it have an effect? Um, I highly doubt it. Let's see. Uh, this relic is compact, extremely versatile as well. Should these find their way into too many hands, I'll be looking into a new line of business. Archivist Icker. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, Ledgy Relic Spam. Uh, let's see, this relic... Alright. I... I don't see anything new on me. There's no checkbox? I don't think it has a cosmetic effect. But you can see right there, there's customize, and then you can choose any any of these things. All right, yeah, I don't think it has a visible effect, which is fine. I've already got enough stuff on me making me look like a light bulb. Um, keep in mind that the legendary relic was a branch; it was like an offshoot from the legendary rune, and runes didn't have a uh, visible effect either. So, okay, two new final bosses: the Dreadwing and the Hell Sister have been added to convergences. The two will cycle on a weekly cadence with Sorrow and the Demon Knight as the possible final encounters of a Convergence. Okay. A challenge mode option has been added to Temple of Phoebe Strike Mission. Uh, if it is something I'm able to get done with pugs, similar to Jade Junkyard or Cosmic Observatory, I will make a guide on it. If it is something I cannot pug, such as Challenge Mode Harvest Temple, I won't be making a guide on that. We'll see what the future holds. The Sky Chalk Strider has been added to a ranger as a ranger pet. Uh, I'm Code. Thank you for the Prime sub. Appreciate that. Uh, World Polish. Added new achievements for binding Leggy Runes and Leggy Sigils to the player's Leggy Armory. Players with existing Leggy Runes and Sigils can visit Lion's Arch or the Wizard's Tower to update their progress. Uh, visit Lion's Arch or the Wizard's Tower to update their progress? Okay, hold on. I am going to Lion's Arch right now just to see what will happen. Let me see if I get any kind of pop-ups or anything. Is there anything for expansion discounts? N not that I know of yet. Oh, there we go. Leggy Rune Collector. Bing, 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 bing. All right, a whole bunch of stuff just popped up. Ah! And sigils. Oh, I guess I don't have max sigils. I thought I did. I guess it just never really affected me. Okay, well, that's that. All right. Reduce the rank of training golems and special forces training area from Leggy to Elite. Their attributes and performance are unchanged. Reduce the rank of the conjured weapons during conjured amalgamate encounter from champion to elite. Their attributes and performance are unchanged. Reduce the rank of the target golem, heavy training NPCs in Heart of the Mist from champ to elite. Their attributes and performance unchanged. Sky Chalk Infestation has been reported in Skywatch Archipelago. A new ranger pet, the Sky Chalk Stri Striker, can be tamed after discovering its location. So it's in Skywatch? Okay, I'll have to go try to find that. Uh, meta achievements now display progress bars in the list of sub-achievements to better track completion goals. Okay. Adjusted the Oniro Spawn Armor Shader to optimize performance. Removed non-essential character equipment panel notifications, such as prompts to apply upgrades to empty slots for characters below level 80. Uh, that was good. Those were really annoying. Uh, those were constantly bugging you to do stuff that you could just could not really do. Uh, Amnitas. Reduce the number of silver map meta event progress chests awarded during defensive Amnitas meta event and adjusted the rewards to compensate. Inner Neos, Hador's Territory. 
Outed Leylooms and an updraft generator to Hator's territory in Interneos. Interneos faction provisioners now provide five prof tokens in exchange for consecrated Serex weapons instead of for Stormforged weapons. Okay. Wizard's Vault Inventory has been updated for the new season, which we just showed. Last season's unique rewards are now available in the Legacy Rewards Shop. New special objectives for the season have been added, and more will appear over the course of the season, including special objectives associated with bonus events and festivals. Additionally, a number of daily and weekly objectives have been updated. New options have been added to some objectives so they can be completed in multiple ways. Some objectives have been shelved for the time being. The intent of these changes is to improve the overall feel of the objective selection, reduce friction with required times for global timer events, and reduce the number of expansion-only objectives that cause players to have different weekly objective lists. Daily Objectives Retired Activity Participation from Daily Objectives Retired mini dungeon completion from daily objectives. I never did that a single time. I was like, that looks like a pain. I'm not doing that. Uh, updated the ordering of some daily objectives to increase day-to-day -day selection variety. Uh, okay, weekly objectives. Objective to defeat 100 of a specific enemy type has been, uh, have had an additional enemy type added. Objective to defeat a specific world boss and now additionally award partial progress when events that occur in the same map that the world boss appears in are completed. Objectives to complete a specific meta event now additionally award partial progress for any event in the same map, as well as partial progress from events in one alternate region in Corteria. Uh, the complete seven Rift Hunts objective now additionally awards progress for any group event, with any uh, extra progress for group event go Rift Hunts. Wait, wait, hold on. Uh, awards progress for any group event, with extra progress for Rift Hunts. Interesting. That'll make that one much easier to do. Uh, objectives to complete three bounty missions in a specific map now additionally award progress from any group event with extra progress from group event bounties. The extra requirements for these objectives have been raised from three to five. So do five events or three bounties. Retire to the complete three group events, complete the highest gear jumping puzzle, and complete the wind through the walls jumping puzzle objectives from weekly objective rotation. Uh, I wonder, like, I would guess that they have data, like, this many people did this and this many people did this one, and maybe they're just retiring ones that, the you know, were done the least or something. Um, Noxie is freaking out on Twitter about some new weapons, apparently. Oh, Noxie freaking out on Twitter. Is it a day that ends in Y? Okay. Retired the complete three group event. Oh, we, we just read that. Uh, the complete meta event, the J Crisis objective, has been updated to require Giala Delve's final meta event, Destroy the Ravenous Wanderer, as its main objective. Updated the ordering of some weekly objectives to increase week-to-week -week selection variety. Shop inventory updates. The legendary starter kit has been updated to set three with two new kits and two returning kits available. Uh, we just looked at that a minute ago. Uh, raised the astral acclaim cost of bag of coins from 30 to 35. Lowered astral acclaim cost of build template expansions from 425 to 350. Added Black Lion Salvage Kits to the shop at a cost of 50 Astral Acclaim, limited to three purchases per season. Ugh. I, if you're new to the game, I do not recommend buying those. Uh, reduce the vendor sale value of Black Lion Mastery Coffers available from the Wizard's Vault from 1 gold to 10 silver. Alright. You might have been a while. Hi, Sensei! <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Wizard's Vault API. Uh, endpoints have been added to the public API for the Wizard's Vault. Uh, I am not reading this, but if you are an API nut, there you go. Dungeons. Lowered the respawn rate of the Lava Elementals and Twilight's Arbor Explorable Etherblade Path. In Strike Missions, the post-victory achievements will now be awarded much faster in Icebird Saga Strike Missions to prevent the achievements from being missed if a player left the map too quickly after receiving their first rewards. Uh, items. The recharging teleport to- Oh, this one is big. The recharging teleport to friend cooldown has been reduced from one hour to ten minutes. Oh boy. So for the three of you out there with friends, you can port to them much more often now. Oh boy. Very exciting. That's the main reason I never bought that thing. I don't own it. Because uh, I was... Uh, I was like, one hour cooldown? I'm not doing that. Okay. Um... General, Relic of Caracosa. Fixed an issue that causes this Relic to heal less than intended in World vs. World. Okay. Um, do I need to read all this? Mm. Hold on. I'm skimming to see if there's new information here. 
Dang it, I do see a few new things. Okay, ah ha ha. Elementalist. Mount skills that occupy profession skill slots, such as the Ley Line Riding Toggle, will no longer start with a 10 second cooldown when used by Ellie's. Active Ellie Bullets now display a corresponding effect on the player's effect bar. Alright, one, I kinda like that. Okay, so before, their bullets floated above their shoulders. And when you're in a fight, it's really hard to see that. So it is good that they're putting it on the UI. I really hope it's not gonna be down here in the buffs. Because we get, you can have two rows of buffs. Like, have it be up here, like, you know, Celestial Avatar or Deadeye Malice or something. Um, but I, it's, it's an improvement, but it could be better if it's not, like, on the UI itself. Active Ellie bullets will now be restored after mounting and dismounting. Uh, Scorching Shot, reduce the burning duration by half in PvE. Reduce the power coefficient by half in PvE. Raging Ricochet, reduce the burning uh, from two stacks for seven seconds to one stack for eight. Searing Salvo, reduce initial burning from two stacks for eight seconds to one stack for seven in PvE. Reduce the secondary burning from three seconds to two in PvE. Increase the velocity. Glacial Shot, renamed a Frozen Fusillade. The explosion from this skill no longer strikes more than five targets. Dazing Discharge, reduce the uh, casting time from 0.4 seconds to 0.26 seconds. Uh, also, if you suffer from Dazing Discharge, please see a doctor. Piercing Pebble now pierces. Best patch note. Purblinding Plasma. D did they make up the word purblinding? The skill is now Projectile Finisher. Innervating Earth is now Projectile Finisher. Flowing Finesse grants stability. Elemental Unload is now Elemental Explosion. And Fiery Frost fixed an issue that could cause the skill to fail in melee. All right. What weapons does the legendary kit have now? Uh, we showed it a second ago, but one sec, I'll revisit it. It has got uh, Predator, Moot, Dreamer, and Frostbang. All right, Engineer. Engineer shortbow mechanics reworked. Arrows now explode on impact automatically. Larger area of effect. Leave a chain reaction field for a short duration. The next arrow that explodes in the chain reaction field consumes the field, augmenting the new arrow with a bonus. Essence of Animated Sand is reworked. Now it fires an arrow equipped with a payload that explodes with Enchanted Sand on impact, granting barrier and might to allies. Chain Reaction is the next shortbow skill in the Radius Grants additional might. Uh, Essence of Living Shadow. Um, ba -ba -ba -ba. It heals and removes conditions from allies with the initial detonation and heals allies with pulsing afterward. Chain Reaction, next shortbow skill, will remove additional conditions. Uh, Essence of Liquid Wrath. The skill has been reworked. Um, skimming the, the grants protection and Aegis to allies on the initial detonation, leaving a fire field. Chain reaction, the next shortbow skill in the radius will grant additional prot. Uh, essence of borrowed time stuns enemies and applies super speed to allies. Chain reaction, next shortbow skill will apply days on hit. All right, we. I'm very curious how NG shortbow is going to be. Like just reading this, I'm not wowed by it. We'll see how it turns out though. Guardian. Symbol of Ignition now grants might every pulse. Hail of Justice increases the bleeding duration from 6 to 8 in PvE. Jurisdiction adjusted the timing for charge level 2 to 1, uh, sorry, level 2 from 1 to 0.9 seconds. Adjusted the timing charge for level 3 slightly. Adjusted the timing at which the skill automatically fires from 2 seconds to 1.6. Reduce the reactivation delay after casting charge level 3 from 0.25 to 0.1. Fixed an issue. Basically, when you're charging up the big shot, it's faster. That, that's what all that says. Fixed an issue that could cause new instances of a trap to refresh old instances' durations. Mm. Spear of Justice. Fixed an issue that caused the skill's reactivation window to sometimes be longer than intended. Renewed focus. The skill now properly recharges all virtues underwater. <gasps> underwater gaming! Yes! Congratulations, Guardians. I'm sure we'll see that they have fixed Mechanist Mech soon. Mesmer. Journey. Reduce the casting time by almost half. Reduce the time from cast to impact by over half. This skill can now be re-aimed during cast. Increase the cooldown from 8 seconds to 10 in World v. World. Reduce the base heal from 1800 to 1295 in PvE. And reduce the healing power coefficient from 0.9 to 0.67 in PvE. Uh, inspiring images increase the cooldown from 15 seconds to 20 in World v. World. Abstraction. Remove the delay before the explosion. Reduce the conditions cleanse from 2 to 1 in World v. World. Reduce the base heal from 3200 to 1900 in PvE and healing power coefficient from 2 to 1.5 in PvE. Uh, Phantasmal Sharpshooter reduced the Phantasm's casting time from 1.2 to 0.8. The Phantasm's attack now strikes targets in a radius of 240 of impact. Skill now has two charges in PvE only. 
So lots of tweaks to that Mesmer healing rifle. Singularity Shot. Reduce the uh, resistance duration from 3 to 2 seconds in World v. World. Increase the cooldown from 20 to 30 seconds in World v. World. And reduce the cooldown increase from 100% to 33% in World v. World. Dimensional Aperture. Added a visual effect when the portal's opened. Effervescence. Increase the total base heal from 916 to 1300 in PvE only. Increase the healing power coefficient from 0.2 to 0.3 in PvE. And 0.125 to 0.25 in World v. World PvP. Increase the power coefficient from 0.5 to 0.625 in PvE. And 0.25 to... 0.3 in World v. World in PvP. Okay. You have to delete ARC every time an update comes out. Uh, Lacrimosa, very often. Yes, the ARC DPS add-on uh, often does not play nice with the game right after an update. Uh, Blish HUD does not have that issue because Blish HUD is an overlay, not technically an add-on. So it doesn't inject into the game files. Uh, Disabled Vet says, am I the only person the game's crashing on after update? Uh, if you are using ARC DPS, uninstall it. Uh, Necromancer. Innervation Blade reduced the aftercast of this... Okay, so Necromancer's swords were largely... What's the word I'm looking for? Bad? So they, they, were, they did too much damage to you and not enough damage to enemies. So they're doing a lot of tweaks along that. Uh, Innervation Blade, Innervation Echo, and Deathly Innervation. All of them the, uh, reduce the aftercast of the skill, increase projectile tracking, increase the power coefficient slightly. Deathly Innervation sped up the casting time and improved the tracking and... Buff the power coefficient slightly. Ravenous Wave, reduce the aftercast of this skill and increase the speed of the wave. Increase the life force gain from 10 to 12%. Reduce the power coefficient from 1.4 to 1.2 in PvP. Satiate, increases the power coefficient from 1 to 2. Double coefficient in PvE and from 0.8 to 1.2 in PvP. Lowered the low health damage modifier from 100% to 50 in PvE and from 50 to 20 in PvP World v. World. Reduce the health cost from 15% to 8 in PvE. Path of Gluttony. Look forward to it, chat. It's right there. Path of Gluttony. Slam and welcome to Japan, kids. It's time for tentacles. The skill now begins movement immediately. Increases the power coefficient from 1.75 to 2.0 in PvE and from 1.0 to 1.25 in PvP. Increase the first time healing from 1600 to 2400. The skill is now a leap. Gorge. The skill now begins movement immediately. Increases the power coefficient from 1.75 to 2.0 in PvE and from 1.0 to 1.25 in PvP. Increases the first hit healing from 1600 to 2400. The skill is now Leap Finisher. Reduces the health cost from 20% to 12 in PvE. Hungering Maelstrom. Sped up the casting time by 15%. Reduce the aftercast of the skill. Reduce the time from casting to damage by 0.25 seconds. Increase the power coefficient from 1.5 to 2.75 in PvE. Gormandize! Increase the power coefficient from 2 to 2.5 in PvE and from 1 to 1.3 in PvP. Reduce the health cost from 20% to 12% in PvE. Devouring Fissage. The skill has been reworked. It now throws a projectile at your target that explodes on impact and inflicts fear on hit. Consume has been reworked. It now siphons strength from enemies hit by the Devouring Fissage, damaging them and inflicting weakness. Gain might for each target affected. Uh, so, yeah, all of that. Are the new weapons tied to story completion? Uh, hold on. Boop, 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 boop. All right, I've not done anything related to the patch yet. Hmm. I do not see that I can equip my mace right now. Hmm. The War Council. All right, close window. Uh, what's this? Oh, that was a meta I did earlier. You unlock the new weapons at World v. World. They're tied to an achievement for the new area or World v. World. Astral Ward Arsenal. Okay, hold on a sec. Astral Ward Ars. Find all the ancient artifacts in Niedra Surrounds to learn new weapon proficiencies. Players can also unlock this achievement by purchasing the artifacts in World v. World from the Heroics Notary Vendor. Okay. That's odd. Okay. Well, I guess I'll be doing that soon. TM. All right. Uh, consume. The skill's been reworked. And now siphon strength. Okay, we already read that. All right. So, Ranger. Oaken Cudgel. Increases the protection application radius from 240 to 360. The skill now applies a heal over time effect to your pet when used, and the effect is reduced when merged as a soul beast, because you're going to heal yourself. Thistle Guard. Reduce the casting time from 0.5 to 0.34. 
Wild Strikes reduced the total power coefficient from 3.0 to 2.4 and reduced the day's duration from 2 seconds to 1.5 in World v World and PvP. Fixed an issue that prevented the skill from working with the Quick Draw trait. Rampant Growth, the skill now heals nearby allies when cast. Fixed an issue that prevented the skill from interacting with the Let Loose trait. Nature's Strength increased the duration from 15 seconds to 25. Reduced the number of stacks needed to trigger Force of Nature from 6 to 5. Force of Nature reduced the damage bonus from 25% to, uh, to 15 in World v. World and PvP. Tapped Out reduced the duration from 15 seconds to uh, 10. So the uh, the Uber Charge mode for the Ranger Maces, you'll be able to stay in it way more often. Uh, Blood Moon fixed an issue that could cause this trait to affect the player while being dismounted and fixed an issue that caused some spirits to have higher cooldowns than intended underwater in PvE. Oh, more underwater content. Woo! All right. Revenant. Serene Slash. Reduce the power coefficient slightly in competitive. Uh, as Cerebic Cut, same thing. Motivating Whirl. Reduce the base barrier by almost half. Reduce the healing power coefficient by half in PvE and by three-fourths in World v. World and PvP. Reduce the power coefficient from 1.0 to 0.6 in competitives. Blossoming Aura, the skill can now target allies. The amount of bonus barrier and damage granted by the skill are no longer tied to Scepter Autos. Instead, barrier and damage increase the longer the aura is placed on the target. The aura can be detonated early with a new follow-up skill, Detonating Blossoming Aura. Increase the cooldown from 5 to 8 seconds in PvE and from 7 to 8 seconds in competitives. Reduce the healing power coefficient from 1.0 to 0.3 in PvE in World v. World and from 1.0 to 0.4 in PvP. Increase the barrier per pulse from 20 to 33% in PvP. Detonate Blossoming Aura allows the Revenant to detonate it manually. Otherworldly Bond, this skill no longer requires an upkeep cost. Bonus effects granted by the skill are no longer tied to Scepter Auto Attacks. Instead, their effects strengthen the longer the target remains tethered. Interval ticks of boons and conditions decrease from 3 seconds to 1 second. Decrease the max tether duration from 100 seconds to 7. That's dramatic. Uh, increase the cooldown from 6 seconds to 8 seconds of PvE. The cooldown will only begin once the tether's broken. Increase the vulnerability duration from 5 seconds to 8 in World v. World of PvP. Reduce the might duration from 9 seconds to 4 in competitives. Reduce the fury duration from 3 seconds to 2 in competitives. Why am I crashing at login? If you have Arc DPS, uninstall it. Otherworldly Attraction. Both the ally and enemy versions now cost enemy to energy to activate. It costs enemy to activate, lol. Reduce the base barrier from 3800 to 1600 and increase the healing power coefficient from 0.5 to 1.0. Doubled coefficient. Uh, Alright, oh my god, we're almost done. Thief Axe Skills that cost initiative will now correctly trigger lead, uh, lead attacks and Assassin's Reward. I'm going to take a nap, but I good night, Lloyd. <laughs> Deadly Ambition, the straight now functions as expected with dual wield skills. Cunning Salvo and Malicious Cunning Salvo, axes created by this skill will now properly gain bonuses when being recalled by dual wield skills. Axes created by this skill will no longer always inflict revealed when being recalled by dual wield skills. This skill is now a blast finisher. Reduce the bleeding stacks from 3 to 2 in PvE only. Malicious Cunning Salvo, reduce the poison stacks from 3 to 1 in PvE. Harrowing Storm, this skill now recalls axes to the targeted enemy instead of to the user. Reduce the Inflicted Torment from 2 stacks for 6 seconds to 1 stack for 4 seconds of PvE. Venomous Volley, reduce the Poison Duration by half in PvE. Spinning Axe, reduce the Bleeding Duration by half in PvE. Improved Missile Targeting Behavior for all Axe Skills. This is probably the biggest thing to look forward to here if you were an Axe Enjoyer on Thief. Increase the Missile Velocity for all. Fix an issue that could prevent Preparation Skills from cleaning up properly at the start of a PvP match. Warrior Valiant Leap, this skill, uh, so we're now talking about the new Warrior Staff. Uh, the skill is now a Leap Finisher and grants 5 Adrenaline when it affects another ally. Uh, line Breaker fixed an issue that caused the skill to be affected by Quickness. This skill is now ground targeted. When arriving at the ground target location, the user will weaken enemies and heal nearby allies while granting them stacks of protection, Aegis, and Unblockable. Uh, so uh, that's going to be working the similar way to the Druid Staff. So Druid, you know, you can be attacking an enemy, but at any time you can use the Druid Staff 3 to, like, you know, heal this ally over here, like that. So it's going to be similar to that, and I think that is a very, very good change. Uh, Snap Pull. This skill now displays a warning effect to enemies during the cast time, probably for PvP. Bullet Catcher fixed an issue that caused the skill to be immediately interrupted when auto attack was enabled. The skill no longer grants boons duration to the user while channeling. 
Uh, Defiant Roar. This skill now grants five adrenaline plus an additional two adrenaline per attack blocked by Bullet Catcher. Up to five bonus adrenaline. Rampart Splitter. Reduce the power coefficient from 1.25 to 0.5 in PvP World of World. Ugh, late notes. Strikes. New challenge mode achievements have been added to Cosmic Observatory and Temple of Phoebe, including new titles. Personal story items. Updated the icon for Gift of Persistence. Engineer mechanized deployment. Fixed an issue that prevented the cooldown reduction from applying to mechanist skills and competitives. Revenant. Updated Revenant Streak Audio with a new set of sounds. Blossoming Aura added a 0.25 second to detonate Blossoming Aura when Blossoming Aura is used. Otherworldly Bond added a 1 second cooldown to deactivate Otherworldly Bond when Otherworldly Bond is used. Okay, that's all the changes. That's everything. And for the people here in the live chat, I'll link them one more time here if anybody wants it. Uh, next up, is there anything new on the gem store? Uh, let's take a look. Fashionable Kilt. <laughs> yes. Oh, the wind. We can feel the wind. All right, so there's a kilt. So that's the thing. Uh, what else we got? Build template expansions on sale. Some mount licenses. Seasonal storage package. Wait, what is this? Bag slot expansion is normally 400 gems. This box is 1,000 gems. A 20 slot bag. You can get those on the, uh, the trading post. Shared inventory slot, bank tab expansion. That's not bad. Uh, it's cheaper. Like, I would ignore this because you can get this on the, the store, uh, or the trading post. But the other three, a thousand is cheaper than buying those three individually. Uh, it scrolls. Missing one. Wait, what? Oh, hang on. The following items are not included due to purchase limits. Oh, storage expander. Okay, okay, so the for, for, for those of you who are, you know, peasants, you would uh, also have a storage expander and the price would be slightly higher. All right. Uh, let's see. So there's a bunch of outfits and stuff are returning, some weapon skins, stuff like that. Oh, the chain whip sword. This one's unique. The sword of whips. Uh, don't see anything else new, just a lot of returning things. Okay, uh, next thing I want to check, black line chest. Did anything change in that? Oh, I don't have a black lion chest here. No. One sec. Let's see. Open. Open. Black lion chest. Okay. And preview. Uh, what do we got? Ice Reaver stuff is back. The Star Sentinel outfit, which was already there. The Cyber Howl Greatsword. Uh... Is this new? I think this might be new to me. It's kind of cool. That's pretty neat. Alright, so that's a new rare thing, uh, or uncommon thing in the box. So if you're interested in that. And someone said there were new mounts on the store as well that I overlooked. Uh, I was just testing chat. They pass. What do we got? What's the new stuff? There's a new mount adoption collection. And a new black line weapon skin collection. Let's see. Reclaimed Bonds. Okay, we got the McDonald's Sprite Chicken. Uh, we got the Edgelord Chicken. We got the... Orin's got some explaining to do if this is her child bunny. Got a Chunky Burb. Got a Skimmer. It's got an after effect to it. This is giving it a the whole time. Yeah, this one's catching bugs in its mouth. Uh, Coral Jackal. McDonald's Sprite Jackal. Uh, a Roller Beetle with a paint job. Uh, very fancy Armored War Claw. A Griffin, sort of? Glacial Tigress. Charge Manticore Skyscale. Scale Saurian, winged axolotl. Yo, the the smile goes up too much. Like that, this thing's got a Joker grin. <laughs> uh, hard lamina siege turtle. I can't even tell a difference on this one. Okay, so there's the new mounts, and someone said the check the black line statue had stuff. Okay, hang on. Um. 
Fastest way I know how to do that is the guy in this log. The shell is the difference. It's the base skin that you can color. Or we got some splaining to do for that bunny. Yeah. Necrotic Essence. Is this new? I think this is new. All right. So for one black line ticket, Necrotic Essence. Longbow, Axe, Shortbow, Dagger, Focus, Greatsword, Hammer, Mace, Pistol, Rifle, Scepter, Shield. How, how do you hold that? Like that, apparently. Okay. Uh, staff. Sword. Torch. Warhorn. Dude. Okay. Uh, was the Black Lion Chest sword a greatsword? Uh, this one? It is a greatsword. Yes. This is a greatsword. Yep, that is a two-handed. Pretty fancy. Illidan dropped his weapons. <laughs> yeah, it's straight from the Black Citadel. All right, cool. I think that is all of the new stuff for this video. Uh, now I will be working on trying to figure out all this new stuff, find the new ranger pet, find the recipe for the new obsidian armor, the new relic, yada, 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 and I will make guides on that stuff as soon as I'm able to. Uh, yeah, that's it. If you got any questions, problems, thoughts, concerns, uh, input, put it in the comments down below, and I'll see you in the next one.